This video is part of consumer theory. In it, I will show you how to draw in difference curves for some common utility functions. Specifically, I will show you how to graph in difference curves for perfect substitutes, perfect complements, Cobb-Douglas, and quasi-linear utility functions. Consider this example of a perfect substitutes utility function, u equals 2x plus 3y. One way of drawing an indifference curve for this function is to fix u equal to some constant value and then solve for good y since it's on the y-axis. The signs of dy dx and d squared y dx squared will then show us what an indifference curve looks like. Here, when I do that, dy dx is a minus 2 thirds, which is less than 0, and d squared y dx squared is 0. This tells me that the indifference curve slopes down, and this tells me it slopes down at a constant rate. Each indifference curve is therefore downward sloping and linear. A second way to graph an indifference curve for this utility function is to use the signs of mux, muy, dmrs dx, and dmrs dy. Here, both marginal utilities are positive, telling us that for each good, as consumption goes up, total utility goes up, revealing that each good is a good good. For this reason, we know that an indifference curve will slope downward. That's because as the consumer consumes more of one good, he has to give up some of the other in order to remain as well off. The MRS in this example is 2 over 3. Taking the partial derivative of the MRS with respect to each good gives me a partial derivative of 0. That means that as good x gets bigger, the slope doesn't change, and as good y gets smaller, the slope also doesn't change. This tells us that the indifference curve is linear because as x gets bigger and y gets smaller, from left to right, the MRS is constant. This is true for each indifference curve, where the higher you move away from the origin in the northeast direction, the higher the level of utility. Next, consider the example of a perfect complement's utility function, u equals the min of 2x comma 3y. For perfect complement utility functions, neither of the strategies I showed for perfect substitutes will work. That's because both strategies involve taking the derivative or derivatives of this utility function. And derivatives of a min function just don't exist. So what we'll do instead is plot some points. Let's start with x equals 3 and y equals 2. u is the min of 2 times x and 3 times y, which here would be 6. That is, the bundle x equals 3 and y equals 2 is on an indifference curve corresponding to utility equals 6. Now let's increase y from 2 to 3, but hold x constant at 3. Utility is the min of 2 times 3 and 3 times 3, which is still 6. That means that the bundle x equals 3 and y equals 3 is on the same indifference curve as the bundle x equals 3 and y equals 2. In fact, if we hold x at 3 and increase y even to 10, utility is still going to be fixed at 6. This bundle, x equals 3 and y equals 10, is therefore on the same indifference curve as the first two bundles. If you keep x at 3, it doesn't matter how much additional y beyond 2 you give this consumer because she needs to consume both goods in a fixed proportion. Likewise, if we hold y constant at 2 and increase only x, utility will stay at 6, giving this consumer more of good x without also giving him more of good y, 
makes him no better or worse off. So what I hope you see is that for perfect complement goods, the indifference curves are L-shaped. If you increase one good without increasing the other in some fixed proportion, you make the consumer no better or worse off. Well, what is that fixed proportion? In this example, for an additional X, how much more Y would the consumer need to be better off? Here, if X goes up from three to four, how much must Y increase to make this person better off? Well, the utility is the min of two times X, which is two times four, where two times four is of course eight. So now the question becomes, what must y be in order for three times y to also equal eight? If y equals eight thirds, then three times eight thirds also gives us eight, giving us a utility of eight. That's this bundle right here. This bundle has four x's and eight thirds y, giving a consumer a utility of eight. This bundle is therefore on a different and higher indifference curve. Now consider what happens if y increases from two to three. What must x be so that this person is made better off by this one unit increase in y? To answer that, see that three times three is nine. So then the question becomes two times what will also equal nine? The answer is nine halves. 2 times 9 halves also equals 9, so the bundle that has 3 y's and 9 halves x will give the consumer 9 utils of happiness. That's this bundle right here, which is necessarily on an even higher indifference curve since this bundle gives the consumer 9 utils. As you can see, for perfect complement goods, each indifference curve is an L shape. And the further we move away from the origin in the northeast direction, the higher the level of utility. I will now show you in two ways why each indifference curve for any Cobb-Douglas utility function is downward sloping and convex to the origin. One way of determining this is to fix u equal to some constant, solve for y, and then evaluate the signs of dy dx and d squared y dx squared. Here, dy dx is negative, revealing that each indifference curve is downward sloping. dy dx being negative, coupled with d squared y dx squared being positive, means that each indifference curve slopes down at a decreasing rate. Now, another way that I can show this is by evaluating the signs of MUX, MUY, and the partial derivatives of the MRS with respect to X and Y. Here we see that both marginal utilities are positive, revealing that both goods are good goods, which means indifference curves have to slope downward. As you consume more X, you have to trade off some Y in order to remain as well off. The MRS in this example works out to be 3y divided by 2x. The partial derivative of this with respect to x is negative, and the partial derivative of this with respect to y is positive. That means as x gets bigger from left to right along an indifference curve, the MRS goes in the opposite direction, which is smaller. And as y gets smaller from left to right along an indifference curve, the MRS goes in the same direction, which means the MRS also gets smaller. Put these together, and from left to right, as X gets bigger and Y gets smaller, the slope gets smaller, making the curve flatten out. Adding two more indifference curves gives me an indifference map, where the further the consumer moves in this direction, the higher the level of utility. As a final example, let's look at graphing an indifference curve for a quasi-linear utility function that looks like u equals x to the one-half plus 3y. Here you see that when fixing u equal to some constant, then solving for y, taking the first and second derivatives of y with respect to x, give us a negative first derivative and a positive second derivative. 
For this reason, we know that an indifference curve is downward sloping and convex to the origin. Here's another way to see that. In this example, both marginal utilities are positive, telling us that both goods are good goods. So each indifference curve has to slope down because as X goes up, Y must come down to keep the consumer as well off. Here, the derivative of the MRS with respect to X is negative, while the derivative of the MRS with respect to Y is zero. As X gets bigger from left to right, this tells us that the MRS gets smaller. X and the MRS are negatively related, and so as X goes up, the MRS goes down. This tells us that as Y gets smaller from left to right along an indifference curve, the MRS doesn't change. Putting these two together means as X gets bigger and Y gets smaller, the MRS goes down. Adding up a decrease with no change leads to a decrease. So the indifference curve is downward sloping and slopes down at a decreasing rate or is convex to the origin. One last note, let's look at what this really means. This means that as Y changes, holding X constant, the MRS doesn't change. Well, if we change Y, but we hold x constant, we are no longer staying along an indifference curve. We are moving to a new indifference curve. What dmrs dy equaling zero means is that the absolute value of the slope of an indifference curve is the same as y goes up but holding x constant. So that means here, the slope at this point is identical to the slope at that point. That's why it's really critical that you evaluate both the MRS as X changes and the MRS as Y changes because along an indifference curve, X and Y both change at the same time and each partial derivative assumes the other good is being held constant.